don't go like Grease. She thought <laughs> I would kiss her ass. She must ain't took a man. Hey. Shit around my neck. It cost her arm and leg. Mm. Damn it, Freedom. I'm going to go. fuck you up. We are extremely pleased that you are here to get your weekly fix with Maybe and Freedom. 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 On Get With The Program podcast. Woo! Big shout out to the whole crew. To the whole crowd. All y'all fans. Thank y'all so much for tuning supporters. in last night. Fans. I like to call you guys supporters. Fans. Supporters. <laughs> <laughs> Troops. <laughs> Tribe. Groupies. Oh, oh. What'd you say? Groupies. <laughs> we, might, we might have some of those. <laughs> there might be some groupies out there. Yeah. Some dehydrated. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> dehydrated. dehydrated. Speaking of. We super grateful, man. I'm I'm like up in here feeling myself right now. I got one of my best friends here on the show, you know, my boy Jay. Damn right. And uh came all the way out here from Texas. Yeah. Now the Cali from Texas to hey, see his yeah. boy. Hey man, but just don't don't forget that I'm always, but he, always a jungle. He's so. from the hood with me, man. Right? From the jungle. jungle. Don't forget that. Yeah. Can you believe in sixty days what we have accomplished? From the night that we went to dinner and we were talking about doing this when I said, hey, we should do a podcast. To yeah, today, we we watched our first episode on TV last night. Mm -hmm. Like, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. How, really cool. How'd that make you feel? Amazing. It was really surreal to sit on the couch and watch myself on the TV and like see our logo and just see the vision come to life and watching all the edits that you've done. And you did a fucking phenomenal job, by the way. It's what we do. Yeah, you did a really good job. Thank you. Super proud of you. Anyways, let's go ahead with our gratitude list. Tell me what you're yeah. grateful for today. I'm grateful for my children, for my family, uh, for my best friend. Um, a lot of best friends, actually, you know. We got a couple mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. in here. Um, nah, but, uh, <laughs> man. Be best means best, dude. Huh? Best means best. Oh, you can only have one best friend? Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. Saying, you can have, you can have, you can have. I mean, they can have all my guys, too, though. I'm <laughs> I'm just saying best means best stuff. <laughs> yeah. So we go we go get to it we go get to him in a second. But uh I'm grateful for him for coming out here, flying out here from Texas. And uh, you know, it's truly a miracle that I get to have these friends in my life still after all these years and knowing uh the lifestyle we led. Most of us shouldn't be here. Um I'm grateful for my uh my daughters, I'm grateful for my sons, uh grateful for my wife. And uh, my mom, my brothers and sisters, grateful for the program of recovery. Yes. I am grateful for my mom at Deanne, who's calling me. Sorry, I can't answer the phone right now, but I love you. Answer. Also grateful for my own mother because her and I have had a really rough relationship, pretty much our whole relationship. And recently we've been talking a lot more, like every morning on the phone and just having these great conversations. And I'm super grateful for it. Like, I don't know. Um, mom and I got into a big fight a couple months ago and we like were really mad at each other and I think we needed that I think sometimes you need to like be honest and even argue to be closer to somebody mm -hmm. sometimes so um, I love you mama <laughs> um, I am again always grateful for my children because they just are blowing my mind lately like everything that they're saying to me the things they're talking about the growth that's happening in them um, it's just amazing and I am super grateful for my Kiki. I had to take him to the vet today. He had to get some shots. That's what's up. I yeah. saw that crazy ass cat. <laughs> yeah, I let him um, just be in the car and like just be free. And he was like looking out the windows like he was a dog. It was cute. But um, it was really cool because he's not a lap cat. He's like a he's a Leo. So he's like he wants to do it on his terms. You know what I mean? So um, he'll like let me hold him for a minute and then he'll be like, no, put me down. But today he actually like laid on my lap at the vet and it was so nice. I was like, I just want to stay here because I like this. <laughs> and um, what else? I'm so grateful that we got to watch our first episode last night. Yeah. One of my uh, best friends in the whole world. Her name is, I'm going to call her Rena. She came over and watched it with me and my son watched it with me. He made me scratch his back the entire time because that's just him. But whatever. Um, and it was just really cool. Really exciting. Kind of got the nerves out of like the anticipation of us being on TV and seeing it and the response and feedback that we've gotten is just incredible. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody who's supporting us. Um, and the people who are not, we see you. Yeah, we do. 
Yeah, we do. It's unfortunate, but whatever. When we're, you know, living up in the hills and mountains and big old houses and having chauffeurs, don't fucking call us. Right? I'm grateful for my community where I grew up at, you know. Yeah. Um, the did love. you just cut me off? Yeah. Kind of just did. Yeah. That was really rude. I had to. You're such a tour ass. I had to. Fuck your gratitude list. Damn, John. She know I didn't mean to cut her off. Yeah, he did. He does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he was tired of listening to that shit. <laughs> no, I, let me let you finish, though. Yeah, thank you. Step 10 that shit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I was going to say that I'm really grateful for God because without God, none of us would be sitting here right now. This show wouldn't be happening and we just wouldn't be anything that is anything, really. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so. thank you, CMCM. Yes. Um, we we, we uh, really appreciate it. Um, we have been having a blast here with you guys. And uh, yes. thank you for this platform. Thank you for allowing us in your doors and opening up your hearts to us. Um, we know that uh, this is just the beginning of something really cool. Um, the people we are going to be bringing in here um, are ones that uh, are very dear to our hearts. And uh, we just want to make this world a better place with you guys. Did we say Omid? Yeah, Omid. Omid. What's yeah. up, Brad? Yeah, Omid is so awesome. Always willing to help us. Always has our back. We probably drive him crazy. We're probably like two kids that he's just like annoyed with sometimes. But <laughs> we love you, Omid. And we couldn't be doing this without you either. Yeah. Yes. And I also want to give a special shout out to our friend, two friends actually, Cami and Danny. Because those two have really like every single day since we've been at yes. this especially yes. danny yeah like has just been have has had our back 100 percent. yeah Thank you, Brett. always sharing our stuff always excited with us and just and without even asking like that's real love and support so um introduce yourself to us yeah What's to up, our Jake? supporters and our fans and our groupies uh yeah to the groupies out there yeah <laughs> <laughs> i am uh jay um, I am from Marine City. I knew this dude since the second grade. And yeah, because I'm out here visiting from Houston now. But uh, extremely grateful that he would even think I would be, be cool enough to even come on the show. But uh, yeah, that's who I am. It's going to be Jay for the page and the groupies. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. It's my partner, mate. I love it. I just want to thank you for taking the trip all the way down here, man. Um, you want to tell us, you, you're here for a certain reason, right? I mean, I'm here for my dad. I mean, trying to get my dad together. Uh, you know, medical issues, older, old people issues. <laughs> and I just got to come down here and I'm the only child, his only child. So hmm. got to do what I have to do for, uh, for Pops. Trying to wow. get him to come back down there. But for some reason, he, he said he don't like how the air smells, or how the air feels in Texas. It's probably too humid. It is a little humid, but I mean, God, does he live here in this area? He lives in the Vallejo area. Oh yeah, so he's used to that breezy. Yeah, yeah. he is. And then yeah. I didn't I didn't realize. I mean, until I came back to visit, that we even have AC out here. <laughs> and then I get there with him, and it's ninety degrees inside. It's like, dude, where the AC at? <laughs> like, you in Texas. And you don't worry about it. No, if it's 90 degrees outside, we go inside and turn on the AC. It's not supposed to be 90 degrees inside. This year. <laughs> but that's the type of stuff he has to deal with. It's going to be like one of the hottest summers out here, too. So yeah. I have to kidnap that and bring him back. Mm. Come out here and check on him. You're going to be on the couch looking like a beef jerk. <laughs> <laughs> just tell him it's just a visit and then just don't let him come home. I tried. You tried that already? He's not going for it. How old is your dad? 75. Oh, yeah. He's still with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a caregiver, so I work with older people, so I, I understand. They're stubborn, and they hate to lose their independence. They, they really do. They will fight for it like nobody's business, like the smallest thing, like yeah. the way you do the dishes. Oh, no, I'll do that. It's like, well, you just asked me to do the dishes. He, uh, he, he did get on my ass before I came down here because he has a little a nail right at the front door where you put the car keys at. And I came in since I was driving. I just yeah. put them on the counter. <laughs> so I'm leaving. I'm looking like now yep. see it's on the thing and he's like by the way i'd appreciate it if you put the keys back on the uh on the nail it just it, it just throws my whole game off throws my whole <laughs> day off and i'm like all right that's small little that's small little thing huh? it's like dude man 
<laughs> He's set in his ways. He is set in his ways. When's his birthday? What's his sign? Fucking November 13th, Scorpio. Oh. Yeah. John knows all about Scorpios. John loves Scorpios. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. God bless you because um, a lot of people, and I see it at work, a lot of people don't give a shit about their parents and they don't take care of them, and it's really sad. So, yeah. you're awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. I try to be. You want to give a shout out to anybody that's uh, listening in? Uh, I'll give a shout out to my cousin. My wife, Rhonda, is going to be like, I definitely got to see this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Rhonda? Hi, Rhonda. Uh, just whoever else going to see it. Ain't no special besides her. You have children? I don't have children. You don't? No. Really? Yeah, my children, you know what? I might I might mess around and like, once <laughs> this comes out with it on it. I'm actually on my juvenile <laughs> detention officer. Are you? So I might like let my kids see it. That's what they say when people ask me. Do you have kids? I'm like, yeah, I got how many kids we got in here? 56. I got 56 kids. <laughs> that's so awesome. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm 56 kids, 40 hours a week. Wow. I'm going to oh, yeah. them see it. They're going to they gonna tune in for sure. That is so awesome. Look at God. So John has his nonprofit and he works with youth. I'm starting a new career where I'm working with youth in drug and alcohol counseling. And you work at a detention facility with youth. Yep. This is really cool. I love that. Thank you for doing the work you do because not enough people pour into our youth. And, you know, I was thinking they are going to be taking care of us someday, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't get enough love and attention from us. And um, that's part of the one of the biggest reasons why we decided to even do this podcast is so that we can help the youth. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. Try to help them get with the program. Yeah. They need to get with the program. Yeah, they need to get with the program because if they don't, somebody else got a program for them. That's right. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> so um, I know it's been a it's been a long time, man. We had a good time last night, right? Man, that shit was awesome. Cause I mean, we, every time I come out, you know, we always me, you, Justin, we pretty much always get together. It was it was D that we always. <laughs> so we just realized, like, out of some of our our closest friends. Mm -hmm. It's me, Sam, just our boy Justin, <laughs> our boy Jr., and then we just got this dude DeAndre, and we was all like, he's like, man, why the fuck I'm the only one who ain't got a name, whose name doesn't start with a J? <laughs> so yeah, me, me, him, and Justin have always been best friends for the fucking longest. Mm -hmm. And then Jr. kind of came in, and then DeAndre was also that dude. You got the pictures? Dude? Yeah. You gonna you gonna put the pictures in there? Which ones? The pictures. The, the fuck. Oh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put them up on here. I'm gonna put them up on here. What you say? Oh my gosh, that was too funny. What you just did because you do I, that. I didn't get it. I didn't get you it. You didn't just get now. that. No, no. Okay, what, redo what that. Fucking Yeah, yeah. You do that shit. That's so funny. Isn't it funny how you take things from people that you've known like your whole life and you yeah, act yeah. like them or your mannerism? Yeah. You talk alike. The funny thing is, us growing up, like I, we hung around each other so much that. They used to actually think I was a Wallace. Mm. Oh, you Jason Wallace? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, yeah. I mean, we like family and shit, but I'm not a Wallace. But mm -hmm. We were always together until I left. So. <laughs> when did you move to Texas? Let's see. Or left here? Did you move from here to Texas? Okay, so I was born in California. Mom went back. My mom is from Fort Worth. So about Lauderdale. Six months. No hell, no Texas. Oh. Oh, what am I thinking? Dallas. Never mind. So my bad. She moved back when I, I was hated like history. Six months, and then I didn't come back out here. I didn't even meet my dad until I was five when I came to visit for the first time. Aww. Then I went back and then moved out here when I was seven, and that's when I met this one. Mm, okay. <laughs> In second grade. We've been and best friends ever yeah, since. I went back and forth for me to Texas, and then I started at town. So me, I came back him but around him in the eighth grade for Bayside that last year after we moved I moved to Oakland then went to town for like that whole first half of the semester and then my mom moved us to Texas and I didn't come back till I graduated in 97 came back here and then left back in 2001 <laughs> like folks come out here and go to school and shit mm -hmm. came out here like college oh. yeah like okay. I never, never fucking go to school it's <laughs> too much shit out here <laughs> Then, you know, my mom at the time was in nursing school back in San Antonio. My brother was just starting at Texas Southern University. And my sister was in her last year of high school. So I feel like 
the only way for me to actually do it is probably something if I go back around other people that are doing it. Mm-hmm. That's why I went back. Yep. Because then I just never came back. You are the company that you keep. Yeah. Right. For real though. Yeah. Um. So, what was in Texas originally that made you? Did you have family there already, or? My mom whole side of Spanish. Oh, okay. So you have a lot of family there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that means shit. Actually, I was just talking to him last night. Like, as far as Marin City goes, it's like nobody. None of my family is there anymore. Oh, okay. So, you know, I got a couple of friends or whatever that I go see, but besides that, everybody's in Texas with me. Besides a few family members sprinkled out up here, like Vallejo area. Sprinkle me. The coolest part about our relationship is uh, when he was getting married, when he, when he, uh, when Jay was uh, getting ready to get married, he was like, man, I want you to come out and fly out to Texas to uh, be at my wedding. I didn't even think twice about it, <laughs> you know, because I was so damn happy for him mm -hmm. because, you know, given how we grew up, you know what I mean? And the women we've been around and dated, like it, it was such a freaking blessing to see my brother fall in love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like you know what I mean, and it was just like wow. Our show was like man, fuck that shit. I ain't getting married. Be out here on the block, these hoes, nigga, forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it it was beautiful, and uh, I had I had a blast. Man, I had the time of my life at his wedding. I mean, it was just like I, I'll, I'll probably post some of those uh, pictures up on this screen. You know what I mean? While this podcast is going on, because I got a lot of videos and pictures still from your wedding, man. You know. I love that the two of you are still friends and that it's it, I can tell it's like no matter how much time has passed or how yeah. long you go without seeing one another, nothing changes. You guys. Yeah. You have an unspoken bond. Probably so many inside jokes. It's not even funny. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello. Like you could probably look at each other and know what you're thinking. You know, <laughs> that's the best. It's funny because uh, Jason was always the fastest one. Jay was always the fastest one in track mm. out of all of us. Uh, and, <laughs> and then and I started. And fucking, and I think it was the, <laughs> the fucking like fifth grade dog out of just nowhere the fuck you get the speed from I used to start beat my ass i ain't been there since. i started i started, yeah. I started yeah i was a track star with him you know and then i started i just got fast out of nowhere you know and uh he was like man how the hell did motherfucker get that fast out of nowhere like i said and then it was after that it was like uh i remember when i came when i moved to oakland and then i came back in the middle of my eighth grade year and we were doing track and I remember mr monaster had us like We'd always like link us up together. Like, we like <laughs> yeah. practice and shit. Oh man, it's like always link us up, and it'd be funny because sometimes he like have other people whatever racing, he wouldn't even pull out the stopwatch. Yeah, because but then every time we fucking every time we race, he'd pull the stopwatch out real quick. He'd be like, hmm, "These motherfuckers, what they on?" Well, probably because <laughs> he knew on. you guys were some real competition with one another. It's I, my son is super athletic, me and him talented me, too, and we I, actually broke records pretty much as a uh, for our grade. For our grade levels, yeah, they had, you know, they had us racing against the high schoolers and shit. Yeah, we was at Bayside. Mm -hmm. We was in, like, we were middle school racing against high school kids and beating them, me and him. Yeah, and your coach probably saw that you guys had this incredible natural talent, and yeah. that's why he probably put you guys together yeah. to like so you guys could push, like, each, other. We, push each other. We yeah. had track meets that were. Uh, did you run into Jesse Owens track meet? The one that's that was. I, I think I got. That's when I got hurt in. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Marilyn and uh, Shayla. Ran in that one too, yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know, and uh, man, woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what; those experiences, being kids for us, man, was like wow. So I'm curious, what do you feel like has been? Okay, I'll ask you first, Jay. What do you feel like has been the most, m like, memorable experience you've had with freedom in your whole entire life? Like, if someone was like, describe one memory that you guys have together. Uh, oh man, this is this, yeah. it's, not, it's, not even, it's not necessarily even a, a, a good memory per se. But I remember we was in uh, we was in Rosa one day. I was up in his apartment in Rosa, and this motherfucker was like, "Hey man, I got I got to go back to the to the town." So he used my car. I remember when he came back. Uh, one of the chicks that he had brought back was like. <laughs> Are you gonna tell him? <laughs> I'm like, tell me what? You not gonna tell him? And I'm like, oh, man, I got pulled over. <laughs> Speed. Oh. All right. And I use your name. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Damn, how old were you? I was grown. I had came back from Texas. I was thinking I was like maybe like nine, eighteen, nineteen. I was like, you fucking name. <laughs> like, hey man, we look alike. What the fuck? That's hilarious. Why did you use his name? He didn't want to get in trouble. And the cold part is, I'm a bitch. <laughs> is he said he's gonna take care of it. <laughs> Said he's gonna take care. So of he it. still owes you, motherfucker. He didn't take care of it, and it was actually my one of my dad's best friend's wife actually worked at uh, the Civic Center. Yeah. And she called my dad. Well, she called she called uh, Kevin Douglas. Wife. Yeah, yeah. So Kevin Douglas was like, "Hey man, tell Jason he got a warrant. Oh shit, for his arrest for not paying a ticket." And I was like, "You got no fucking ticket? Cause I thought he took care of it." <laughs> I had to go. I still had to go pay that. How shit. much was that? Four hundred something dollars, dude. Freedom, you owe Jay four hundred something dollars. I got dollars. you. I got you, guys. <laughs> call, I got you, bro. I totally <laughs> forgot about that too. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give him a gift I'm right now, y'all. I'm about to give him. <laughs> Boy, you better not give me that. Ass, right? <laughs> he give me a gift right now on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, we're, we're, we're making an amends here on the show. But I mean, that's that's just. I mean, this, this is that's crazy. hilarious, honestly. And the fact that you guys can laugh about it now, you know, that's awesome. Um, how about you, Freedom? What is like your one of your most like memorable memories you have of Jay and you? I think there was uh, there was. Were you at Justin's house with us the night when I cut myself? No, you weren't there that night. There was another night that uh, I remember we did. Uh, I had those little ass puppies. Remember the puppies? Yeah. I had the little puppies and stuff and little pit bulls or whatever. Yeah. And uh, me and Jay used to always think we was little gangbangers and shit back then. <laughs> so I think I think I used to pretend I was a crip <laughs> or, or it was the other way around, huh? Yeah, <laughs> was it? Definitely the other way around. All, all my people were crips. So. I used to think I was. <laughs> We used to throw up gang signs and I didn't even know what the hell I was throwing up. Man. <laughs> we yeah, we still got pictures of it too. I'm, I knew what I was throwing up. Yeah. <laughs> but then but then we, we actually started our own our own gang. Oh our own, really? Like, yeah. Gang, Marin City and it was a UNLV. Everybody every, what is, every which stood shit. for what? Us niggas living violently. <laughs> oh my gosh. LV. LV, you bitch. Still got it tattooed like, on me. I still got it tattooed on me right there. That used to be our shit. Wow. LV How old were you guys when you started that? Shit, I know I was like 12, 13. <laughs> we got jumped in. <laughs> Did you guys jump people in? Yeah. <laughs> we thought we was little bangers for real. <laughs> yeah. Dang. I mean, shit, we actually did like some little stupid little thug shit. Like, we beat up the, the, the crackheads that was coming from like other town other cities and mm -hmm. shit like, they beat them up and shit and and uh i remember i remember they uh what's it called <laughs> coleman tried to get on us one day for that <laughs> beating up the clientele <laughs> yeah we was just little we was just little kids just trying to have fun but uh i think one of the coolest memories i really had with jay was uh uh was probably like you know when we were running track together you know because those were like the funnest parts of our childhood mm -hmm. to see us out there doing what we really love to do and being in competition. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, just to be in competition. We always tell each other, like, we're going to smoke that dude. We're going to get him on. We're going to get him on the track. Yeah. I got fast because I was running from my dad a lot. Uh. <laughs> I was running from big. I was running from big George. <laughs> hey, boy, he'll pull that switch off the tree. I'm go. He didn't make you pick your own. Oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> Yeah, we was. Um, so Jay, what do you feel like you have seen? Like, what's the biggest thing you've seen change in freedom since you've known him so long to now? Like him going through all the things he's been through. Now that he's in recovery and like just living a totally different life, what do you feel like is like the biggest change in him that you've seen or that you love? The fact that that he's been through what he's been through. Like a lot of people just shut down. A lot of people collapse and to see him i mean everybody has their ups and downs mm -hmm. but to see him push through it fight through it um and i know he you know he has his kids and 
like he said, that's that's who he lives for. And like I say, back in the day, he was a little selfish. But to see the, <laughs> to see him go from that to being so unselfish, so giving yeah. of himself, not even just to his kids, to everybody. I would I would never like this dude was like the most talented motherfucker I knew. When we were in fucking school, I cheated off his pay, like all the, <laughs> all the shit. And then he was like the best artist. Mm. Motherfucker, you got like A's and B's damn near all the time. Yep. And shit, here I am struggling to get fucking C's and shit. <laughs> and the C, you know, then he has his, his little, his little, his moments. He goes to prison and shit. That could have been it for him. Yeah. He could have said fuck it. Yeah. Or he could have came back out and been like fuck it. Yeah. But to see, like, even with this here so mm-hmm. podcast, mm-hmm. I knew he had the potential because I knew what the fuck he was doing way the fuck back when. Yeah. But to see, like, at times, like, you know, he called me some of his doing his, his dark times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, of course, I'm going to fucking be there for him, but it's like, shit, I'm way to fucking Texas, and I can't really do <laughs> shit. It's just my words. I can only give him my fucking words. In your ear. In, in my ear. And then to see him, okay, be like, fuck it. I'm going to go ahead and push through. Yeah. The strength that he has, when, like I say, other people could have collapsed. Right. So that's 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 one of the the biggest thing I'm most proud of of him mm-hmm. because he he doesn't give up. Mm-hmm. He keeps on going. Don't cry, dude. <laughs> I'm trying not to. <laughs> nah, because we we had a talk when he, when he flew back out here, man. Um, uh, I think it was last year sometime. Him and his wife flew out here, and then me and my wife went out to meet him at uh, Vallejo at dinner, and. Um, he said something to me afterwards, like when we were leaving. Damn, I'm getting emotional as fuck right now. Hmm. Um, <laughs> nah, but what he what he said to me was, um, you know, if you ever get to a point where you feel like you need to go that other route, call me. Yeah. You know, and he said, uh, I got a plane ticket waiting on you. Mm. You know, it's a real friend. You know, he said, uh, you come out here, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I'm gonna take care of you, mm-hmm. basically, and that 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 for me that meant like the world to me because um, that moment. I mean, I even went home and texted him. I think I texted you that night, right? Um, and even the next couple of days, I was like going through my phone, like realizing what he really did for me in that moment. And I was just like, "Damn, man, that's that's a real brother, man." And mm-hmm. he's been in my life for over thirty some years. Mm-hmm. You Damn, know? you guys are old. Yeah, and we both don't. We both we don't look our age. I'll tell you. <laughs> no, you, you know? don't. We don't look our age. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, we we were at dinner last night. You know, at Chevy's, and uh, we uh, it was our nice little reunion. And the lady walked up, and we both wearing our hats or whatever. And she's like, she's like you, because uh, he ordered his drink, and uh, you know she like, carded him. Can I see your ID? And I'm like, she's like seventy eight. I'm like, yeah, I'm 44, man. She's like, 44? <laughs> I'm 44, man. <laughs> yeah, you guys, yeah. you guys, neither one of you look your age. Yeah, but uh, I'm super grateful for you, bro. For real. I love you like none other, man. Like, you've been here for me, um, even at my lowest, man. And, uh, like, you never judge me. You never, uh, you know, talk down on me. I never, ever heard uh, you talk my name in the dirt. You know what I mean? And on your big day, man, I, it was just a blessing for me to show up there for you yes, and to be around you and your family again and to see your brother Marcus and all them, man, that that to spend time with you guys in the clubs, you know, and um, wow, I had even had one of my songs played in the club that night. Remember? Yeah, that was <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm super grateful that you came out here, man, and that uh, even though the circumstances you're up against with your father, you know, yeah. I pray for him. Um, and for you and your family that you get home safe to your wife. We love you, Rhonda, always. You know, and um, I just want to thank you for coming on to the show, man, and be with us. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you for coming on to the show and <laughs> yeah, being yeah, brave. <laughs> love you. Yes, sir. Love you too, bro. And I, I love what you said. I think that's awesome, like, to grow up with someone and watch them transform and to actually recognize their growth and mm-hmm. be able yeah. to give them their flowers and, like, yeah. you know, really love somebody like yeah. that. That's yeah. special. Yeah. Not everybody has that. It's my guy. Yeah. You guys, you guys <laughs> are blessed talk. to have each other. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, our, our parents saw our relationship was so sacred. You know what I mean? They never, whenever Jay would come over to the house, you know, it was like always like, all right, Jay here. You know, mm-hmm. and we, we had our own little, you know, cool little thing going as kids. You know, we, we had each other's back through whatever. Man, I remember going over there and it's like, 
<laughs> I remember going over there. It'd be it'd be other kids over there, not family, and you and when they cooked, they cooked. <laughs> and I'm I I remember there were certain times that they'd be like, "Oh nah, oh make sure Jay gets." <laughs> yep. And hey, we ain't got no more food for the other ones. Like damn. <laughs> They were already here. But yeah. I come through and it's like, hey, hey, hey. Nah, make sure Jay get a plate. Yeah. Like, like I'm family and shit. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I might need to go home and eat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you were uh, John's freedom's right hand. Yep. Still His is. To this day, it still is, yep. too. I love that. Always. You know, I think I sent you a video yesterday. They were saying that uh, we need to send our children to trade school instead of college because yeah. in about 20 years, any job that a robot can do is going to be unavailable to human beings. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, they're already bringing our food out at restaurants, it's, right? It's true. Pretty soon they're going to be taking our ladies. They already are. They already are. Sir. <laughs> but then, you know, then all of a sudden here come the men. Uh, that, ro that rose thing? You guys heard about that? The, the, the rose for y'all? Yeah. You heard about that? Which one? It's Which you. Ha you got to look it up. It's a bunch of single ass dudes that had girlfriends and lost them to the rose. Yep, lost them to the rose. But then it's, it's okay now because there's like this thing now for men. It's called the egg. Looks like an egg, and you just. What does it do? What does it do? Put a little inside of it, I guess, and go to work. Blow, <laughs> blow job, fuck? Betty. <laughs> feel like the inside. The fuck? Of a vagina, I guess. Super BJ. <laughs> Why are we talking about this? The, whole, the cold part. Why it, not? The cold We're grown. Is, for the females, they get some some battery operated. So you just press a button, just hold it there. But then for us, we got still got to actually do the work. <laughs> no, actually, I saw one yesterday on Instagram. It was on an ad, and it kind of looks like a um, you know, those light up wands, like when you go to the fair. <laughs> yeah. So it the the stick is like this big, and then the part that actually goes on your penis. You just push the button and it moves around itself and does all the suction and everything. It's go. This world is going crazy with these. I mean, it's like overstimulation. Hold on, man. This started all over talking about trade school. Trade school. <laughs> <laughs> because look, we're talking about robots are taking over everything. Artificial intelligence. So send your kids to trade school, guys. <laughs> Not to that trade school. <laughs> yeah, not to that. Well, that I mean, whatever. I, something I thought about anyway, though, because I mean, I went to four year college, got a degree, and I don't even work in the field that I even went in. And I, most people don't. I mean, just, I mean, debt. So it's like, yeah, I'm, like, Fuck, shit, I'm not even paying that shit. Fuck. But uh, going to a trade school and just specifically like with my nephew, I tell yeah. my sister, like she's pushing that, you know, with one is five and one is two and a half. It's like, oh yeah, we're gonna start a college fund on this shit. Fuck that kind of shit. Just right now, especially. The, the, for them, is the technical world yeah. mm -hmm. where you need to be going, like mm -hmm. learning computers and all that type mm -hmm. of shit. Yeah. So you fucking trying to get them to go to school to be anything except for what the fuck we doing. You need to think more futuristic. And it's a trap. I feel personally like a lot of the times college is a trap yes. because why will they give a, a young person just fresh out of high school a loan for school but not a loan to start a business? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so many entrepreneurs, billionaires, millionaires, successful people who dropped out of school in junior high, high school, never went to college. Yeah. You don't have to go to college to be successful in life. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not I'm not saying don't go to college, do whatever you want to do, but really think like outside of the box. There is no box. It's crazy because you got programs like mine, right, where you you try to give a kid an opportunity right you try to give them an outlet and there's a million other things that these kids could be doing on the streets right now right we already know what they could be doing right we already know uh trying to get kids to deter themselves away from the life that i had because the years i served in prison i wished every day that i made a different decision mm -hmm. every fucking day mm -hmm. right but now this world is built on opportunities and it's built on uh you know Everyone getting off their ass and going to do something, right? I don't want no handouts from nobody. Mm -hmm. I never wanted a handout from anybody. I went out and did it, right? I educated myself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that, uh, you know, I've been getting a lot of hate 
recently, you know, because of the things that I do. But I'm out on the front line with these kids. Yeah. I'm on the, I'm on the fucking front line. So I see the kids that don't have parents. I see the kids that whose fathers are getting locked up over petty ass shit. I deal with these kids on a daily who want to go out and rob somebody Mm -hmm. who just had a brother that was killed. Yeah. Who are coming in my program, getting this shit off their chest so that they don't got to go out there in the world and become those little walking time bombs like Mm -hmm. I was. Mm -hmm. So I, I love what you just said. You're absolutely right. And I feel like people need to hear that. And the passion in your voice is super powerful we're all in and what you guys are doing and you guys are black men in the community making making a difference impacting the youth which is our future ultimately that's what we're here for so it's important that these things that you're saying are said don't feel bad about any of that we can still talk about jay i actually actually like this yeah Um, so with me and in my field the kids that we get are kids that have already committed crimes course and i'm not gonna lie some of some of the crimes that some of these kids have committed so basically our program we have a three to six and we have a a, a a nine to twelve month program so the three to six are like first time offenders or first time getting locked up and be actually being uh sentenced doing this program they get therapy they get the best medical, uh, dental, all that. They probably some. I got kids in there that had never been to the dentist, um, have never been to a doctor. <laughs> They're getting meds for whatever. I'm not big on the meds, um, mm-hmm. just medicating kids. But then some of the kids that we get is like, okay, this motherfucker needs something. Mm-hmm. He needs something because if he don't, he's gonna kill somebody, mm-hmm. or has already killed somebody. But when you when you know where they come from, you know where we come from, and you know the obstacles that are already in our way. I, I'm not going to even say it just just for being black, because this we have a, a, a few non-black kids, non-Hispanic kids that are in our facility that come from. They live in the same neighborhoods, so. But even with them, like we tell them, you already got to step on these kids over here, just because you're white. You already got to step on us. Mm-hmm. And you could be same dirt, poor ass, roach infested house, looking for food like the rest of them out here, but you already got to step on us. Mm. So everybody is, I'm aware of everybody, but it's really fucked up because I know that nine times ten, if something happens to me, nine times ten, the shit that's happened to me <laughs> has happened to, to me by somebody of my own race. Kai got killed you mm-hmm. know, by one of us. You want to tell him who he was? Uh, Kai was my six year old cousin that got killed at the. Moran City Festival in 92 when Tupac came out here. So yeah, he was killed. We don't we don't we still don't know who the murderer is. Still no that was let's say 92. Mm-hmm. So fucking still nobody's came up and spoke up for him. But somebody black did that shit. Mm-hmm. My uncle in Fort Worth, he was killed by his best friend, black dude. My cousin Akoya, Kaik's brother, got killed in 2017 by his baby mama in Louisiana. Black. You know, I remember I told you when I was living in fucking Third World, when I was going to Texas Southern, some niggas came in like pistol with me shit when I was on the way to work. Huh. Some old niggas. So, I don't really live in fear of, oh man, this white dude is gonna shoot me or this white lady. Or, I gotta deal with the Karens. I, I'm worried about, okay, who the fuck, the fuck is this dude, black dude doing up over here? That's that's what I do. So, it's, it's kind of fucked up, but that's, that's our reality though. So the reality of you too is, Depending on where you at, it's most likely gonna be one of us. Mm-hmm. It's kind of fucked up. I think a big part of that too is just the circumstances that people get put in living in neighborhoods like you guys grew up in. Like I think I feel like it's designed for the the killing to happen that way by I won't say names. It's called, it's called the projects for a reason. Yeah, because it's a project, don't think an experiment. They don't really think about that shit, motherfucker. When they did that shit. It was called the project. We're going to put these motherfuckers in the project. Let's see what happens. We're going to give them this, but take away this. Mm-hmm. Give them that and take away that. And then we just going to fucking sit back and watch and see what happens. So it's going according to plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's going according to plan right now. 
And now, like, Marin City, now, like, they, they want it back and shit. Like, ah, let me go ahead and take it back now. Get them about the fucking projects and shit. And, like, and so when I go there, that's not the Marin City that I grew up in. When I go there and I look around and shit, like, this is Asian lady walking a dog down the street and shit. Even though, you know, we had our whites and our, and our uh, non-blacks in there, but it's like, Fuck are the black set. Like, <laughs> but then we know that shit happens, you know, still shit, motherfuckers still getting shot out there and shit. But it's like everybody's like uh in the projects now. Like the last time I went to the two hundred lot, it was for Tony's memorial when mm-hmm. we did the balloon release mm-hmm. for Tony. Other than that, they'd be like, Man, nobody be in the two hundred. I'm like, that's that's the spot. Like when I go through the hill, yeah. I through the other day, I'm like, what yeah. the like, <laughs> so, so I don't know if you ever seen this it's a it's a video where they had some black some black people and some white people. They all started at the same line. They were out in the field or whatever. And the guy was asking, like, Oh, I see. If that. you have two parent if you live in a two parent household, take a step forward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then most of the white people took a step forward. <laughs> then it's like uh if your parents already started the college fund, take another step forward. If you have a bank account in your name, take a step forward. Mm-hmm. So by the time they start you start seeing like how far ahead mm-hmm. <laughs> like the white people were I think they started out with asking if your if your skin color is light, take a step forward. I think that was the first thing that he said. And then they said, if you've ever been uh, abused in a household or something like that, in one of them that I saw, mm-hmm. take a step forward or whatever. Yeah. So, but once they did that shit, by the time they actually started, like everybody right and they was like, all right, everybody run. Shit, fucking white people already damn near at the fucking a line. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you see shit like that and you know. Uh, what our our, our 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 obstacles are, then it's different. So for somebody that's that doesn't have that, of course, uh, some white dude or whatever, like you say, somebody that's gonna come on the show and say something, you don't know what the obstacles are, mm-hmm. and you know the whole ah oh, man, we let you free back in the day, and you know lace up the bootstraps and all that type of shit. Well, what the fuck you do if you ain't had no boots? Hmm. What the <laughs> fuck you strapping up? Yeah, <laughs> and then just imagine back then too. You had a, we could talk about the ones that were born into slavery and all they know is slavery. And then one day it's like, all right, you motherfuckers free. Well, what the fuck are they supposed to do? <laughs> what well, the fuck? This is all I know. Some of them stayed and then some of them went out and then they start creating laws to lock them back up, mm-hmm. i.e. prison. Mm-hmm. The whole prison system. I mean, that's really what it is. Yeah. Modern day slavery for real. But yeah. Come on, John. You know, I know my shit. I'm on this shit, man. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. I'll be on this shit, man. <laughs> well, it needs to be talked about. I'm super passionate about it. I think that the awareness needs to be a reality. And so many people are uncomfortable to have these conversations, and we shouldn't be, right? If everyone was aware of the reality, can you imagine how much things could change? Honestly, like, it's it, it's frustrating that there's people that really, like, someone that I am related to, her father one time posted this meme on his um facebook page and it was like a construction worker and it said um it's not white privilege it's hard work and i was like oh i went in on him and he blocked me and he like still to this day won't even like talk to me or anything but it's like he doesn't even understand what that means you know what i mean he's just and he's so defensive because I think he feels guilty. I think that that's a lot of people's problems. They feel responsible. They feel guilty because they just don't understand. And they're unwilling to listen to conversations like this or sit down with someone like you or someone like you and hear your story, hear what you've been told by your ancestors, your grandparents, your parents, or what you've seen your parents, your siblings, your friends in your community go through. I, I feel, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like your stories right i feel like i've been fortunate enough to where i grew up in the same neighborhoods too so i got to see firsthand you know and i've experienced my own type of prejudice because my kids are black their dads are black my best friend my, you know i've i'm uh, have the hispanic family like all of those kinds of things but i'm no one's ever going to look at me like i'm a black woman you know i'm never going to understand exactly what you guys experience because that's not been my experience while i will always speak up and I will always defend because I see, I am aware. And I feel like that's kind of a part of my gift in this world is so that I can bridge this gap, you know, and kind of try to make a difference. I know I'm not going to change everyone's mind, but I feel like there's a lot of people in my family that I 
change their mind. Like my mom's older brother, when I was 11 years old, he realized that most of my friends were black and Mexican and he pulled me aside and he was like, you're not gonna have a baby with, uh, or he goes, you don't like them colored boys, do you? And I was like, actually, yeah, when I grow up, I'm gonna have babies with a black man. And then my daughter was born on the day he died three years later. You know, and so I kind of feel he ended up getting cancer and God rest his soul. But I feel like that was like, I feel like he sent her to me. And that was his way to be like, I'm sorry for being ignorant, honestly. But um, yeah, I think it's awareness is the number one thing that we have to start with. And it comes from having these uncomfortable conversations with people. Like, no matter no matter what, I just think it's really important. It is important. Yeah. Black people are the only ones that are actually truly addressing these issues. Mm-hmm. So a lot of a lot of them, a lot of blacks are afraid to get out there, put themselves out there in ways, you know, because I mean, look at what Martin Luther King went through. He he, he fought for equality and he was killed mm-hmm. by the government he was assassinated. So there's certain things that we have to be careful with talking about, you know, because you know, what's crazy is. I don't know, maybe it's just my motherly instincts. I'm willing to die. I mean, I'm willing to die, but I got goddamn kids, right? I I have kids too, but I mean, if I'm not fighting for them and you know what I'm saying? Like if I'm not trying to make sure that their world is a better place, what what am I doing as a parent? I'm going to be afraid because someone might take my head off. It's not that I'm afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying. Let's let's get that straight. I didn't say you're afraid of anyone. So yeah, don't get defensive, yeah, yeah, yeah. but no, I'm, I'm just, just saying I'm just, for I'm me just as a mother. That, I'm just saying, though. I understand, as you, you yeah. as a mother, but I am a father. And okay. I have five also, you know. Okay. It's, it's, they're, for me, I've been to prison. I have a criminal background record, right? Mm-hmm. You've never experienced that. And I hope to God you never will. That is the worst place for any person to ever go um, because they say uh, they're not for isolation when you can't even go in the same cell with somebody that you were friends with. If I was friends with a white man on the streets, I can't talk to him in there. Mm. Right? We couldn't be doing this in there. No. It ain't none of this right now mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. It, you and I would never, ever be able to do what we're doing right now. This is a gift, mm-hmm. right? This is a gift of the free world, mm-hmm. that so-called say, right? Mm-hmm. So every day I got to look at, uh, you know, what I'm up against. And I got to be careful on where these feet walk. And it, it's sad to say, I mean, because I have to worry every morning when i leave my house am i gonna come home to see my kids that i just said i love you to mm-hmm. it could just be a bad day for some cop it could be a bad day for i mean there was a little kid that just got knocked on the wrong door and got shot by some guy i mean it could just be one of those days somebody having one of those days you know and i have to think about these things i don't live in fear but i have to it plays in the back of my mind 24 mm-hmm. 7. And, but be aware yeah. yeah and and i understand that that's why i was saying i'm talking about me yeah and maybe i'm crazy but i'm also white so i know that i can go and say and do shit that you guys can't do and i'm willing to do that is what i'm saying yeah you ever live in the hood where you got to look over your shoulder yes. and wonder if you're taking your garbage can out to the curb if you're gonna get shot or something like i mean come on man that's that's the lifestyle that we grew up in mm-hmm. you're not guaranteed to even take your trash out and come back Look, the fucked up part is, so me being in Texas, and you know, I, I am with my guns. When I when I fucking put my gun on my hip every morning when I'm finna leave or, or where I'm going, I'm truthfully not thinking about what cop is about to shoot me, what uh, what white person I have to deal with. I'm actually thinking about which one of these little fucking black or brown kids I'm gonna have to smoke for trying to come up here and fuck with me because. Because of nine times out of ten, you already know if if a black person is killed, they're most likely killed by a black person. But at the same time, white on white crime is a real thing. Most likely, a white person is killed by somebody white because those are the people you live around. You usually killed by somebody you know. 
or somebody that's around you. We we're talking about <laughs> like having a type. And um, I was like, I don't have a type because my baby daddy, my daughter's father is yeah. really tall and he's really dark. And then my son's dad is super light, super short, has freckles. And I was like, I don't have a type. And, you know, I've dated other ethnicities and whatnot. And my son's like, Mom, yes, you do. You like bald black men. <laughs> and I'm like, just because your dads are bald and black doesn't mean they're my type because I ain't with none of them anymore. Like, did they have hair at the time, though? No, neither one of them. <laughs> I met them bald. <laughs> and they're still bald. Bald, bald as well. It's Maybe and Freedom and Jay, and we're back from our little breaky break. Much needed. We had an intense conversation before the break. Yeah, Much needed. Um, these conversations are super uncomfortable to have, but they're so necessary. And I'm really proud of us for having this conversation and really thankful that Jay is here because um, your perspective is needed and wanted and respected by me yeah. and by freedom, of course. And um, yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, I think, like, like I said in our very first recording, the purpose of this podcast is to inspire, to help elevate and grow and inspire change in the community. That's why we're here. So having uncomfortable conversations. And I also said, we're going to say some things that you don't like. You may not like us for it, but you're going to respect us for it because you're going to see that we're the kind of people that actually make a difference, not just talk about it, but we actually make a difference. And we're out there doing things in the community with the kids, with, you know, our own parents, grandparents, other people that we're around that we work with, that we go to school with, right? That we run into it in our fellowship, like everywhere. Yeah. So we're special and we're chosen, like Jay's shirt says. Can you yeah. tell us about your shirt, Jay? Oh, man. Back I love like it. This, Jay. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> you can even like stand up a little bit. And he has the onk on. I like that. Well, this is going to maybe rub a certain community the wrong way too <laughs> okay that's okay we like to it's for, we like to rub feathers right john <laughs> i mean freedom <laughs> so the lion actually represents the the tribe of judah uh judah the hebrews okay so one of the lost tribes of judah is that a jewish yeah sort of sort of kind of okay so if you actually read the the scriptures, uh, Deuteronomy twenty-eight, it it tells you the uh, all of the the bad things that happened to the Hebrews mm -hmm. that did not follow God's plan. And if you read those scriptures, you'll see that there's only one group of people that that is, and that those were the people that were in the transatlantic slave trade. Mm. So, in essence, we are that the tribe of judah okay the us here the black americans uh the ones that were stopped in the dominican republic all along that translated slave trade so yeah you hear a lot of like like Kyrie irving um nick cannon when he <laughs> said that we're the true hebrews uh -huh. i mean that's why i say it's it's a touchy subject for, <laughs> for some who claim to be those people mm -hmm. when if you read the scriptures of who they are with those people yeah we are so that's what it is We're, that's what the chosen is that's what the lion is with the chosen mm -hmm. uh, i love it i think people, it's so. great and i like um your onk. onk i'm glad you said it correctly yes um i actually i was curious about it because i saw a lot of people wearing it this was years ago um so i'm like what's the difference between an onk and a cross and what i saw and you can definitely correct me if i'm wrong is that the onk represents eternal life, where the cross represents death, right? That's the major thing. And the onk was actually a comedic symbol, and it was it predates the cross. So right. the cross actually took from the onk. So yeah, it represents life. So you have the upper part, which is represent a woman's womb, mm -hmm. and it spreads out to the outer parts, to where it can also represent their ovaries, mm -hmm. and then the birth canal. that. Right. And then you have the man at the top of the household, or whatever and the testicles mm -hmm. and then shaft so yeah. yes it does represent the circle of life yes when again again anytime you hear about a cross it's like oh well jesus died on the cross right along with two other people so that's all when you hear about the cross it's like oh, that represents death mm -hmm. so yeah i also just saw a documentary recently about in our brain mm -hmm. how it looks exactly like, like that. that yeah the uh pineal gland yes the third eye mm -hmm. 
which is very important to always be tapped into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just look like this. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, thank you again yeah, so much for being so here it was really nice to hear you guys interact with each other and get to know a little bit more about freedom's childhood and like just seeing you guys together i know how special this kind of friendship is because i have some of these they're very few and they're rare and they're really special and i just really am grateful that you came here and yeah, yeah. that you're an amazing person thank you thank you yeah Think of myself as a person. <laughs> Good. Yeah, he he one of the ones I I literally jump in front of something for. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like seriously. Yeah. Like put my life at risk for him. Yeah. You know, and that that's my heart right there. Yeah, man. Oh, you guys yeah. are so cute. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to this thug shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back to this thug shit. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you all for tuning in once again on Get With The Program podcast with Maybe and Freedom. Don't forget to drink your water and don't be a fuckboy. We love y'all. We love y'all. Right, peace out. Bye.